Hi guys, Shen here with How Jen Does It. I'm excited for today's video because I am going to share my house plants with you. You all know I love house plants and I've had quite a few requests to do this video both here on YouTube and Instagram whenever I post pictures of my house plants. So I have, I believe it is 37 house plants. That includes the few that are in my boys' rooms. So I thought I would go around and show you my house plans and let you know some things that I have learned. I get asked a lot about tips and how to grow house plants and all of that. And I did want to say that while I do really love house plans and I've learned some things, I'm definitely not an expert. I'm still learning as well. Uh, so I just wanted to share some things that I've learned, but don't be afraid to get a house plant. Some of them will do better in certain lighting and all of that, but don't be afraid, they're great. I'm going to start in my entryway with my Monstera Deliciosa. This is also known as a Swiss cheese plant because of the holes in the leaves. These are very low maintenance and super easy to grow, but they do get very large. So you want to make sure you have enough room for it. Mine has grown a ton in the two and a half years since I got it. These actually grow away from the sunlight and they don't like direct sunlight. So one thing that I do is turn my plants about a quarter of the way each week so that they're not leaning in one direction. I learned that tip from a viewer. So I didn't do that the whole entire time I've had this plant, uh, but I am doing it now and it does seem to help. So these are great plants, easy to grow, but they get very large. Another thing about these plants is the more mature they are, the more holes the leaves will have. So you may have seen pictures of these plants with tons of holes and they're gorgeous, but my plant isn't that mature yet. So eventually it will have more holes. Also in my entryway, I have this plant stand from Ikea. All of my white pots, except for one I think, are from Ikea as well, so it's a great place to get pots. I wanted to start out with this Devil's Ivy. I have three of these. These are gorgeous and they're so easy to grow. I definitely recommend these to anyone who is just starting out with growing house plants. They're very tolerant. They really only require that you water them about once a week. Of course, you want to avoid overwatering any plant. Uh, these have a vine that grows down, which I think is really pretty. Mine isn't that old, so it just started um, having the vines coming down. Next to that, I have a snake plant. These are also known as mother-in-law's tongue. Um, these are some of the most tolerable plants. They're very easy to care for. You only need to water these about once every two weeks. Down here I have a jade plant. These are a succulent, so they don't require a lot of water, but they do require a lot of sunlight. I have four of these and they are one of my favorite plants. I'm going to share some tips as I go along, but one thing I get asked a lot about is drainage, and I have a few tips. This is just one of them, but one thing that I do is keep the original pot inside of the white pot. So the original pot has drainage, and it will allow the water to drain out into the white pot, which I can dump, or I can just take that original pot out and put it in the sink and let it drain while I water it. You definitely want to make sure that you have proper drainage or you can get root rot and it's pretty hard for a plant to come back from being over watered and not having enough drainage. On my entryway table, I have another jade plant. One thing about jade plants is they do require a lot of sunlight or they can become leggy. I had this one in another area where it was getting even more sunlight and since I've moved it to my entryway, it has become a little leggy, so I may move it. Now we are in my living room and this is my dragon tree. I haven't had this for all that long. I don't think I've had it for quite a year yet, but it is slow growing, but it will get up to six feet high. So I'm hoping that is the case for my plant because I have it in this corner. 
These are great plants because it is on the NASA air filtering plants list. So it's great for removing toxins in the air. However, it is toxic to cats and dogs. On my end table, I have another Devil's Ivy. This one's a little bit different. It has the dark green and the lighter green. I love this. It's so gorgeous, but it was not in good condition when I purchased it. It needed some TLC, so that is what I gave it. And you can see it has tons of new leaves that are forming on it. And then below, I have another jade plant. In John's office, I have this palm. I was a little concerned about this because some of the fronds are turning yellow, but I did read that that is actually normal, that that is the way that the plant conserves energy and the fronds will eventually turn yellow and then brown, but it has had new fronds grow in, so it should be doing okay. Sometimes I bring it into the breakfast nook, which gets a lot more sunlight, although this is right next to a window, so it is getting a good amount of sunlight. Palms are toxic to humans and pets if ingested. In my dining room, I have this marble and wood table that I got from Target. I will link it if it's still available. It's great for plants and I think it looks great with my decor. And on the top, I have this large spider plant. It has grown so much since I got it and I think it's gorgeous. These are really easy to grow. Another great one if you are just starting out with house plants. They don't require a ton of sunlight and I just water mine once a week. The small plant is a vein plant. These are low growing plants, so it isn't going to get very high. It'll probably stay rather small. I think the leaves are really pretty. Sometimes they have pink in the leaves and this one does well in high humidity so it's one that I like to mist every few days. And on the bottom I have another devil's ivy. This seed jar is a souvenir from Arizona. I love souvenirs that just go well with my decor and I purchased this from a Native American woman and it is hand carved. I think it's gorgeous. Next to the table, I have a peace lily. I did have a fern here in case you remember, and that fern was actually one that I had outside, but I brought it inside for the fall and winter. And since it's warm, I can bring it back outside. So this peace lily is a new addition and I think they are gorgeous. These are pretty easy to grow as well. They prefer bright filtered light but they are tolerant to low light and drainage is really important with these. They bloom spring through summer. On my dining room table, I have another spider plant and the pot I found at Home Goods. Over here in my dining room, I have my Birds of Paradise plant. I got this about two and a half years ago from Ikea and it really needed some love. It was doing really well and growing nice and tall and then it seemed like I needed to repot it and I got a few comments that the pot was too small for it. So I did repot it and then I learned that Birds of Paradise actually do not like to be repotted and they do just fine even if they are root bound. So then I really had to love it. I decided to bring it over here because this area gets more sunlight and it's doing really well. I recently trimmed it. I did have stakes in it, but I took those out and I'm going to take it outside and it does have new leaves growing. So I think it's doing well. I think going outside will really help it. Now we are in my breakfast nook. My breakfast nook gets tons of sunlight, so it's perfect for growing succulents and cacti and plants that need a lot of sunlight. So I have this round shelf I got from World Market, and at the very top, I have this tiny little succulent. I needed something for the spot, so I had this wooden thing and it was perfect for that spot. So I put a little succulent in there. Didn't think it would survive. It just has a tiny bit of soil and I just give it a couple drops of water every couple weeks and it's still living a couple of years later. I have another snake plant and like I mentioned earlier in the video, these are really easy to grow. And then I have this gorgeous succulent. One thing that I do with my succulents is I add pebbles or rocks to the soil and that just really helps to prevent root rot. 
Next to the round shelf, I have another dragon plant and a couple of others. This dragon plant looks different because it's actually twisted together and then all of the little plants form that big ball. So it isn't just made that way. You can kind of see it's tied together there so that it's growing that way on purpose. All of these plants are in baskets that I found from Ikea. So next to the dragon plant, I have another jade plant. This one I've had for a little while and it's getting really big and I love it. It's so gorgeous. It's doing great here right next to the window. These plants are getting a ton of sunlight because of all of these windows, so they do really well in here. On my breakfast nook table, I have this terrarium. I did put this together myself. I get asked about it a lot. And I just used a variety of succulents. The glass bowl I found at Home Goods, I believe it was like five or six dollars. And the base of this is actually a souvenir that we got from Mere Woods in California. I think it's such a gorgeous bowl. I didn't want to just stick it in a cabinet and it worked perfectly for this terrarium. And I just love the blue succulent. It's so gorgeous. And again, there's no drainage for this bowl. So I added the soil, which is good for succulents. I'm going to show you that at the end of this video. And then the rocks really help with preventing root rot. Next to my kitchen sink, I have these two plants. I have the aloe vera plant. These don't require much water at all. You want to let the soil get completely dry and they are a succulent, so they require a lot of bright light. And then I also have this cactus, the same thing. They don't require much water, but they do require a lot of light. This is usually on the other side of my sink. I just spread it over here because it was easier to show it to you. So this is an African milk cactus. I love this and it can grow up to eight feet tall and I can't wait for mine to get really tall. It has grown so much since I got it. And again, this does not require much water, but it does need full sun. So it's great for my kitchen. This is a shelf in my bathroom and these gorgeous flowers are actually succulent. So they require a good amount of sunlight but minimal watering and this shelf is right next to a window so it's perfect. I have huge windows in my bathroom so once we are ready for the day I just open up the shade and let all of that sunlight in because we don't really come in here unless we're getting ready. So over here, I have a ZZ plant. These are awesome plants. Another great one if you are wanting to start getting into house plants. These grow really well. They're really low maintenance. And mine has grown so much since I got it. This is another newer addition. I saw this at Ikea and there was no way I wasn't getting one. I think it's so gorgeous. The beautiful bloom lasts for a long time and it has gorgeous leaves as well. This likes bright light. So I don't think it's very hard to grow, but it does need a good amount of light. On the other side of my tub, I have this prayer plant. I've had this for less than a year, but I think the leaves are so gorgeous. And this is another one that's really easy to grow. And you can see the new growth here. I also have a few succulents over here, and then my boys have some cacti up in their room. This is an orchid. It's not in bloom right now. I am hoping that it will rebloom. I wanted to quickly show you this watering can. It's great for succulents and cacti because it has such a narrow spout. I will link it below. It doesn't hold a ton of water, but you don't need a ton of water for succulents and cacti. This is the plant food that I use. Different plants have different needs and it was too much to put all in one video. So I would recommend just looking up how often your plant needs food and getting 
the correct plant food. These are the soils that I use. So I have miracle Grow Moisture Control Potting Soil, and this is great because it protects from over and under watering. And then I also have the Cactus Mix, which is great for succulents as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, I would love to have you subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching, guys.